Hey guys, sorry I couldn't be there today. Um, we're going to go through techniques of differentiation. We already did definition of a derivative, and that was uh, when we had f prime of x equals f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Um, oops, and I forgot, which I told you not to, the limit as h approaches 0. That's an h. Um, we already did that, and we found that it was the slope as h got very, very close to 0. Now we're going to start taking some shortcuts um, because we have the understanding of where it's coming from. We're going to go through constant rule today, single variable, power rule, constant multiple, and sum of difference. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday are each going to have a day devoted to product rule and quotient rule, uh, just because of the time-consuming process of those two. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, just remember some notation. Derivative of a function is a function that allows the slope of the tangent line to be easily calculated. It's denoted by one of three ways, f prime of x, y prime, or dy dx. Uh, this is the derivative of y with respect to x. Um, they really all mean the same thing for what we're doing and for our purposes. Um, we'll go into a little bit more of how to use this one a little bit differently uh, as we go on later in the year. So first one, constant rule. Let's go ahead and put that into words, and let's fill this in on the box on your guided notes. Um, anytime you take the derivative of a constant, you get zero. Derivative of a constant is zero. That's what we need to put in that box. Uh, why is that? Why is the derivative of a constant zero? Because the slope of a line, y equals c, y equals any number, is zero because it's a horizontal line. So anytime you're taking the slope of a horizontal line, it's a flat line, it's got zero for a slope, so our derivative is zero. Uh, you've got four examples here. Slope of y equals nine is zero. Slope of f of x equals zero is zero. Slope of s of t equals negative eight is zero. Slope of y equals eight pi to the third, it's really uh, just zero again. Because a is a number that's not x, and pi to the third is just a number. So, a uh, single variable rule, derivative of y with respect to x of just x is one. So the derivative of a single variable is one. Any single variable. So why is that? Because the line y equals x has a slope of one. If you were to graph y equals x, it's a, whole, a line going up one over one. It has a slope of one every single time. Uh, so these three examples are going to be just as easy as what we just did. Uh, y equals x has a slope of 1. f of x equals x has a slope of 1. s of t is equal to t. Because this variable matches this variable here, we do the same thing. If that variable didn't match, we would write 0. All right, now let's actually start getting to where we have to do some work. We have the power rule. Derivative with respect to x of x to the n power. If you look here, here's n and here's n. So the power becomes the coefficient. And then my exponent is one less. So in words, the power becomes the coefficient and the new power is one less than the old power. So you subtract one on the power. This is gonna be the most common one that we use throughout the entire, uh, entire section of taking derivatives. So, we got a bunch of examples here. I'm going to do a few of these, and then I'm going to let you finish the rest. Let's start with y equals x squared. We've done this a bunch with our definition of a derivative, where we plugged in x plus h, and we plugged in x, and then we put it all over h and factor, or uh, distributed, and then combined like terms and solved, canceled the h, and we got 2x. Well, why are we getting 2x? So let's take y prime. Let's bring the power down. And then the exponent is subtracted by 1, which essentially is just 2x to the first power. So y prime is 2x. Now over here, I want to take that 6, f prime of x, and I want to bring the 6 down as a coefficient, x, and I want to take the 6 and subtract 1. Uh, I'm going to skip c. It's just like b. I'll let you do that on your own in just a second. Let's do this one. Uh, before I write y prime, 
I want to rewrite this as y equals x to the one-half power. The reason I want to do that is a square root really is the one-half power. So I'm going to bring my coefficient or my power down as my coefficient, and I'm going to subtract one from the exponent. One half minus one is negative one half. We don't want to leave a negative power, so y prime is one half, and then x to the negative one half is a square root, but it's going to be in the denominator. The reason it's in the denominator, anytime you have a negative power, if you had one over x that becomes x to the negative first, or if you had x to the first, you can make that one over x to the negative first. When you move a power from the numerator to the denominator, you change signs. So since it's negative one half, I bring it to the denominator and it becomes positive one half. And as we just did here, that's a square root. So let's take a look at f. First off, f of x, let's rewrite this as x to the negative third power because a denominator power you bring it to the numerator it switches sign so f prime of x is bring the coefficient down x and then subtract one negative fourth power so f prime of x equals negative three because x has a negative exponent I'm going to bring it to the denominator and change it to a positive exponent uh, g, I could do it the same way as d, but because it's a cube root, I'm going to write it as the one-third power. And then this one is three-fourths, so I'm going to bring it to the numerator as a negative uh, three-fourths. So let's go ahead and do g. S, uh, let's do s of t first. Let's rewrite it uh, as t to the one-third, but when I bring it to the numerator, it becomes t to the negative one-third power. So s prime of t equals negative one-third t and then I want to subtract one from that power which is negative four-thirds negative one-third minus one is negative four-thirds so s prime of t is negative one-third and then I want to bring this to the denominator t to the four-thirds power now four-thirds power is still a cube root uh, we're going to leave it like this for right now. Uh, we'll go through a little bit how to simplify that a little further. Um, take a second right now, finish C, E, and H, and then we can uh, then we'll move on. So constant multiple rule. The constant multiple. Let's take a look. Up here, this is all inside the derivative, and we actually bring C outside the derivative to be in front. So the constant multiple rule, if there's a coefficient multiplied by a function, the coefficient can be pulled out and multiplied by the result of the derivative of the function. So if you see a coefficient, take it out and reuse it at the end. So let's go ahead and start here. This is really y equals 2 times x to the negative second power. So what I want to do first is I want to take this 2 and put it out in front. And then I want to take the derivative of x to the negative second power, which is negative 2. It's power rule. Bring the power down and then subtract 1. Well, now I'm going to re-multiply this in. 2 times negative 2, that's negative 4 x to the negative third will go to the denominator and be x to the positive third. Letter B, f prime of x. First I want to write it, let's pull this out, four thirds times x to the third. So f prime of x is four thirds times, let's take the derivative of x to the third, which is three x, bring the power down, subtract the power by one, 3x squared. Go ahead and simplify now. 4 thirds times 3 becomes just 4x squared. I'll let you try C on your own. For D, the only thing you need to remember to do is I want to write it as 4 times x to the 1 half power. 
So then we write it as y prime equals 4 times derivative of this, 1 half x to the negative 1 half. 4 times 1 half is 2. x to the negative 1 half is a square root in the denominator. So sum and difference rule. Take a minute, look at these, write these down. Um, to sum these up, it's essentially, if I have multiple terms, I take the derivative of each individual term separately. That's the most important part of this rule, is that we take the derivative of each term individually. So, uh, I copied a, b, and f into the PowerPoint to look at. Um, for a, y prime, I want to take the derivative of x squared, which let's do power rule, bring the 2 in front, x, lower the power by 1, plus the derivative of just x is 1, and 5 is a coefficient, so I take the 5 out in front, and then the derivative of a whole number is 0. I don't need to write it, but we're going to show that we're taking the derivative of everything. There's the 1 from the derivative of x. So the derivative of y, of y ends up being just 2x plus 5. So now in problem b, uh, we're going to take the derivative of each individual term. So f prime of x equals, let's take the derivative of x to the fourth power, lower the power by 1, minus 3 halves times, because it's a coefficient, now I want to take the derivative of x cubed, 3, x squared, power down, lower the power by 1, plus 2 times derivative of x squared, I take the power down, and I lower the power by 1, plus the derivative of x, and the derivative of a constant. So when we simplify that, we get 4x cubed minus, I'm going to multiply in 9 halves x squared plus 4x to the first power plus 1. Uh, now in problem f, we don't know how to use this 2 yet. Uh, we're going to get into this probably next week to use this to instead of having to distribute but right now what I have to do is I have to multiply this times itself so when I distribute the x squared I get x to the fourth minus x cubed plus x squared distribute the negative x get negative x cubed plus x squared minus x then distribute the 1, I get x squared minus x plus 1. So when I combine like terms, I get x to the 4th, um, use that one already, minus 2x to the 3rd, combine the 3x squareds, and the x's, minus 2x, and then plus 1. So this is now y equals this. So when I take the derivative of that, y prime equals, bring the power down, x to the third, minus 2 times derivative of x to the third, which is 3x squared, same power rule, bring the power down, subtract by 1, plus 3 times the derivative of x squared, which is bring the power down, lower the power by 1, minus 2 times the derivative of x, which is just 1, plus the derivative of a constant, which is 0. So let's simplify that. y prime equals 4x cubed minus 6x squared plus 6x minus 2.